Probably the most important thing for mutual fund investors or for that matter any form of investors is how much money did I make or what was the return on my investments. The higher the return, the more attracted we are to the investment. However, not many of us understand this concept completely. When it comes to returns, there are different types, mostly based on the different methods of calculation. With more clarity about the types of returns, you will be able to generate more yield from your investments. A financial advisor talks to us about various things like risk mitigation, asset allocation, consistency of returns, balanced portfolio, investment horizon, and others. But at the end of the day, the investor would only care about how much he or she would end up making. In spite of this, when it comes to understanding the returns generated by these funds, quite a few of us end up making elementary mistakes. Such fallacies are commonplace among investors, and truth be told, it's not all their fault. The financial industry takes advantage of this lack of ability to understand and use numbers in calculations and makes the most of it with misrepresentations, thus leading to a sustained impression of the wrong notions which stay conceptually frozen in our minds. In this video, I'll be explaining the basic concepts relating to mutual fund returns, which can also be used across all other forms of investments. And it assumes no more than basic arithmetic knowledge from its viewers. Hi, I'm Pratap Narula, mutual fund distributor and investment consultant. And if you like my video, please put in your likes and subscribe to my channel. Also ring that bell to get all future notifications from this channel and put in your feedbacks and comments. Further, if you are interested in making some investments, please put in a comment and I shall get back to you on the same. Return on investments have always been the central standard for going for any form of investing. You may come across returns expressed in a variety of nomenclatures. Have you ever wondered what does each kind of return signify? Or why not use a single kind of return in all types of investments? It is the knowledge of such differences that are going to take your investment to the highest levels. The more you get to know about the usefulness and application of these returns, the more contented you are going to feel with your investment reports. There are many ways to calculate returns from mutual funds. However, the most important and widely used ways are absolute return, CAGR or compound annual growth rate, and XIRR or extended internal rate of return. Firstly, let us look at what is absolute return. Absolute return can be defined as the return that is absolute gain or loss an investment generates over a specific period of time. The gain or loss is expressed as a percentage of the total investment and is irrespective of the time frame. This is also called point to point return or annual return since it measures the returns from one point in time to another point in time like for a particular year. Also, if the scheme declares any dividends over the course of the year, that will also be added to the absolute gain for the purpose of calculation. Now, how is absolute return calculated? It is basically the difference between the current value and the original or purchase value further divided by the original value converted in percentage terms. We shall further be looking at an example for all three types of returns in this video. Next, we come to what is CAGR. CAGR or compound annual growth rate is the measure of an investment's annual growth rate over time with the effect of compounding taken into account. It is often used to measure and compare the past performance of investments or to project their expected future returns. Again, how is CAGR calculated? The compound annual growth rate formula requires only the ending value of the investment, the beginning value and the number of compounding years to calculate. It is achieved by dividing the ending value by the beginning value and raising that figure to the inverse number of years before subtracting it by one and converting it into percentage. Now let us look at an example which further clarifies the calculation of the first two types of returns that is absolute return and CAGR. What you see here is a set of data for a lump sum investment of rupees 1 lakh shown for a period of 10 years with a closing value of Rs. 2,69,605. 
So as per the formula for absolute return, the current value of rupees 2.69 lakhs less the original value of rupees 1 lakh gives us 1.69 lakhs. This when further divided by the original value of 1 lakh gives us 1.6961 and finally when converted in percentage terms gives us 169.61%. This is the absolute or total return over a 10 year period. Next, let us look at an example of annual return in the same set of data. The column ROR or rate of return shows the yearly rate of return for every single year. So if I want to calculate the annual return for the sixth year, which is 4.5%, let us look at how this is arrived. The closing value for the sixth year is 1,19,077 and the opening value is 1,13,949. So using the same formula of absolute return, the difference between the two is 5,127, which when divided by the original value of 1,13,949 gives 0.045, converted in percentage terms gives 4.5%. Next, let us look at how to calculate the CAGR for the same set of data. So, as per the formula for CAGR, we require three values. The ending value, which is Rs. 2,69,605. The beginning value, which is Rs. 1 lakh. And the number of compounding years to calculate, which is 10. Now, when calculated, the ending value divided by the beginning value, that is 2,69,605, divided by 1 lakh, raised to the inverse number of years, that is 1 by 10, gives 1.104264. This, when reduced by 1, gives 0.104264 and when converted to percentage, gives 10.4264%, which is the compound annual growth rate. Just to cross-check, if from the original data, instead of the different rates of return of every year, we substitute those values with the CAGR, which is 10.4264% for all 10 years. We arrive at the same ending value, which is 2,69,605, thus verifying that the compounded rate of return every year was 10.4264%. This is even more clearly depicted by showing this data in the form of a graph, which compares the original data versus the data using the CAGR. Here we see two things. Firstly, notice how the lines vary, but the ending value is the same. Secondly, the line based on the CAGR rate of return has a smoothing effect as compared to the line based on the original rate of return because it equates the rate of return every year. So finally, when we compare absolute return to CAGR, it is 169.61% to 10.43% and although absolute return looks very impressive is irrespective of time and the reality is actually the CAGR of 10.43%. So before investing we need an investment which has an impressive absolute return as well as CAGR compared to its peers. Now before we move on to the third and last type of return which is XIRR or extended internal rate of return it is critical to understand why XIRR is so important. In the previous two types of returns, that is absolute return and CAGR, we were assuming one original investment of rupees 1 lakh and how it has grown over the years, which is also usually the way funds show their growth over the years. However, this is not a real life scenario because investment cash flows, be it in or out, are never evenly spaced out. Sometimes there are late deposits or early withdrawals. A couple of months are skipped in a row and in such cases, calculating the return from investment becomes difficult. Now what exactly is XIRR? XIRR or Extended Internal Rate of Return is a measure of return which is used when multiple investments have been made at different points of time in a financial instrument like mutual funds. It is a single rate of return when applied to all transactions, that is investment and redemptions, would give the current rate of return. And it can be calculated only in Excel. XIRR is a very useful tool for calculating returns from SIP where there are a series of investments 
and sometimes one can redeem a little from their investments and sometimes several months investments are skipped as one has the option to pause their SIPs. Now how is XIRR calculated? The Excel function for XIRR is as visible on your screen. In this function, you have to feed the values, dates and guess. Values are all the transaction amounts, that is the investments and the redemptions. Dates are all the dates on which the transactions happened and guess is the approximate returns. Guess is optional and in case not entered will be assumed as 0.1 or 10% by Excel. XIRR is available within the financial functions under the formulas tab. Now let us look at an example for XIRR. Here you see two sets of data. In the first scenario, we have an SIP of rupees 5000 per month for 15 months, which when sold in the 16th month realizes rupees 81,000. In the second scenario, we see random deposits and withdrawals without any fixed pattern. All deposits are in negative as they are in outflow and all withdrawals are in positive as they are in inflow. Upon using the XIRR function, we can very quickly get the actual rate of return considering different amounts and times, which otherwise is a very complex and tedious calculation as we would have to calculate annualized return for every single entry and then average it out. The XIRR in the first case is 12.07% and in the second case is 11.81%. Lastly, let us look at the difference between all these three types of returns. This is based on four different factors, which are description, calculation, usage and investment. Description and calculation should be very clear by now. Under usage, I would like to add that CAGR is used for comparison across various investment options and XIRR is used for evaluating your personal rate of return. Absolute return being the total increase over a particular period. Lastly, under investment, while CAGR is good for lump sum investments, XIRR is good for investments which are spread over a period of time. I am sure that after going through this video, you will have complete clarity on the rate of return your investments are earning and it will not be easy for anyone from the financial industry to mislead the new confident you. Hope you like my video and please do like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new regular video updates.